got a paper. This is big news. This month, the journal PLOS Biology published a paper about the work of folded players building models into cryo-EM density maps. Not only did folded players contribute to this paper, they are authors on the paper. Folded players can build models that outperform those of expert microscopists, and they outperform the models from state-of-the-art algorithms. Research articles like these in peer-reviewed scientific journals are one of the major ways that we share the work of folded players with the rest of the scientific community. Um, this is how we communicate the scientific value of folded puzzles with the rest of the world. Please see the folded blog for a more detailed discussion about the contents of this research article. Um, and note that you can read this article for free on the PLOS Biology website because it is an open access journal. So big congratulations to all folded players for contributions to this work. Um, we look forward to publishing more papers in the future. Um, so thank you for playing. One more bit of news. Uh, this week we have a science chat planned. We will have a few scientists from the Folded team online in chat that can respond to questions that you have about this paper, about other stuff going on in Foldit right now. Uh, so please join us. Puzzle updates. This month we have three puzzle updates. First is from NeilPG628. So all of the proteins that we've introduced to you guys in the past have been composed mainly of alpha helices and beta sheets. But we want to introduce you to the polyproline helix, which is a helix that's much tighter than the alpha helix, and is also far more unstable because there is no internal hydrogen bonding between residues, like in the other two secondary structures that you guys are familiar with. And while these helices are typically made entirely of proline, they can be made out of other amino acids, so long as their bond angles roughly match the conformations of a polyproline helix. And we are going to start introducing puzzles containing polyproline helices to see how you guys can design structures around them. The biggest thing to consider is satisfying the polar oxygens that point out of the polyproline helix backbone. A way that nature solves this problem of satisfying the oxygens is shown in the protein collagen, which is actually composed of three polyproline helices intertwined with each other so that any oxygen on one polyproline helix is able to make hydrogen bonds with nitrogen atoms on other polyproline helices. We want to see what you guys can do to solve this problem as well. So in this first puzzle, we're going to provide a small 38 residue protein with a polyproline helix and designable residues on either side. And we're going to allow you guys to have full reign on those designable residues in order to mutate and fold them however you wish to see what sort of structures we can create. Promising designs will be tested in the lab for the stabilization of the target. And this work will open up new avenues for using proteins that involve more than just alpha helices and beta sheets. Two more puzzle updates. We saw this month some de novo freestyle puzzles. So this is where we have a design protein from a folded player, and we are providing the sequence to folded players as a prediction puzzle. And the purpose of these puzzles is to see if folded players can predict the design structure of a protein from its design sequence. One thing that folded players might think about is when you are designing a protein, you can think about how other folded players might predict the structure given your design sequence. Lastly, we saw some more symmetric design puzzles this month. Um, hydrogen bond networks are back. I know everybody misses hydrogen bond networks. These are another strategy we can use to introduce blue polar residues at the interface between symmetric units in a protein. This month, I want to highlight a uh, design of the month from SP Vincent, or S from SP Vincent. Um, it's probably SP Vincent. What do you think, SP Vincent or SP Vincent? Uh, user SP Vincent. We have a design here. This is from Puzzle Oh, I should have this, 1758. Um, Sp Vincent has built a phenomenally great hydrogen bond network in this protein. Um, I want to point out that if we look at just the monomer chain, and we, we ignore the symmetric chains, we like that all of these helices have nice blue residues on the surface um, and a nice orange hydrophobic core. So this looks to me, immediately it looks like a protein that, that stands a good chance of folding up uh, on its own in, in a monomer. Um, when we look at the symmetric chains altogether, we see that there is, a, there is on the backside, there is some, some nice orange hydrophobic contacts, which should give strong binding between the symmetric units. Um, but there's also a beautiful hydrogen bond network that spans the entire interface. Let's zoom in on that. Um, I should use a mouse. Okay, so on my view options here, I've, um, 
I've used uh, the CPK coloring so that we can see blue nitrogen atoms and orange oxygen atoms. This helps us show all the polar atoms that need to make hydrogen bonds. Um, and I'm also showing uh, the bondable Hs uh, so that we can clearly see which atoms are H bond donors that have not a hydrogen on them and which are H bond acceptors. These are like the, the red oxygens mostly that don't have hydrogens. And then we click show bond side chain so we, we can see all the hydrogen bonds in the, in the protein. So what we see here is this extended network including a, uh, an, an asparagine right in the middle um, that reaches across to a, a neighboring asparagine and then to a histidine. And what do we have down here? A, um, oh, that's not good. We have a uh, aspartate, which crosses again to uh, glutamine, which uh, accepts another H bond from an, another histidine and a third histidine. Um, all in all, we have this monstrous network in which I think almost every atom, every polar atom is satisfied in this protein. What's more, we have this, um, we, ha we have these buried polar groups at the interface. Uh, so we have all of these buried polar atoms that need to make hydrogen bonds, and they are. They're making all the necessary hydrogen bonds, and this network spans out to the surface of the protein uh, where water can finish off and make the rest of the hydrogen bonds. What makes this hydrogen bond network nice is that all of the polar atoms are satisfied. Um, it's not necessary that a hydrogen bond network be this complex or this huge, um, but oftentimes it is necessary in order to satisfy all the hydrogen bonds. So great work, Spavenson. Um, looking forward to seeing more hydrogen bond networks from Folded Players. Lab updates. Last month, we told you that we ordered some protein designs for testing. Um, these are proteins that are designed by players. What we mean when we say we ordered them is we reverse translate the amino acid sequence of the protein and we can order that DNA sequence from a DNA synthesis company. They send us the DNA in a gene. Then here at the lab, we insert that gene into E. coli bacteria and we grow up that bacteria. When they multiply, they multiply our gene also that we've inserted inside. Um, and then we, uh, we can induce the bacteria to produce the protein that is encoded within that gene. So that's what we've been doing this month. We received the genes for about 30 protein designs from Folded Players. So actually, if you'd like to see more about how we make proteins in the lab and test them, um, leave a comment below and maybe we can, make a, uh, we can make a special video about protein production at the IPD. Lastly, before we go, I wanted to address uh, some comments that we got since the last video. Um, in particular, I wanted to talk about the user poll that we ran last month. You'll remember we were asking if you would be OK with sharing your usernames when we talk about uh, protein designs, and uh, particularly if we offer some critique um, about uh, things that can be improved in, in designs or things that we like in designs. So we got those some results back. Thank you, everyone who participated. We were a little bit surprised. We um, So first, we saw that actually most Folded players, kind of as we expected, um, that you would like to see your usernames when we present uh, your designs. More surprising, we saw that um, a lot of players were concerned with privacy. And particularly for new users, it seems like um, a lot of people think that by default, there should be some privacy in the way that we handle usernames. So moving forward, um, we will not change the terms of service. Um, and by default, we will always ask you before associating your username with your data. In the, in the meantime, uh, thank you for everyone who agreed to, to share your username. We hope to include more Folded players in these videos. That's all we have this month. Thanks for watching. Thanks for playing. And we'll see you in January.